In this video, we're going to be going over the installation of a StealthWatch cloud sensor in our LAN environment. For anyone who's worked with StealthWatch Enterprise, please be aware that this is a separate product. StealthWatch Cloud is a SaaS application that primarily focuses on security and visibility in the cloud. It has some of the features of StealthWatch Enterprise, but is inherently different in it quite a few ways. It doesn't have the same network use cases that StealthWatch Enterprise has. StealthWatch Enterprise can save months or even years of granular flow data. StealthWatch Enterprise also has a broad range of granular alerts and custom security events, while StealthWatch Cloud focuses more on abnormal behavior and signs of malicious activity. StealthWatch Enterprise focuses on ingesting data from ICE and NetFlow, while StealthWatch Cloud can ingest data from NetFlow, AWS, GCP, Azure, Meraki, Kubernetes, Kubernetes clusters, and Umbrella. With those differences in mind, I personally see StealthWatch Cloud as a powerful tool for visibility across various cloud platforms, and it fits quite well into the LAN in certain use cases. If you ever wanted to test out StealthWatch Cloud, just do a quick Google search for StealthWatch Cloud, and you should be able to find a link to sign up for a 60-day trial. I'll try to include the link in the description of this video. In this video, I'm going to be installing it on the LAN since I have a very small lab environment and I want to use NetFlow as my primary data source. The first thing I'll have to do is download the ISO image from my StealthWatch Cloud console. If you have a login, you should be able to see it right there on the dashboard initially. I've already downloaded the ISO, so I'm not going to make you watch me download it again. I'm just going to warn you, I've been really lazy about VMware upgrades, so pardon me as I'm installing it using the old vSphere client. Try not to judge me too much. In my vSphere client, I'm going to create a new virtual machine. For the configuration type, it's going to be a custom configuration. I'm just going to name this virtual machine SWC Sensor, since it's my StealthWatch Cloud Sensor. I'll specify which storage location this virtual machine will be saved to. For the guest operating system, I'm going to choose Linux and then select Ubuntu Linux 64-bit from the dropdown. For my CPU requirements, I'll need to make sure I have a CPU with at least two cores. The StealthWatch cloud sensor requires at least two gigs of RAM, so I'm going to assign that now. For the NIC requirements, we need to have at least one if we're just collecting flow. The sensor can ingest NetFlow, IPFIX, or SFlow, but can also ingest data off of a span port. If I was going to span data to, to the sensor, I would need at least two NIC ports. Since I'm going to only be using it for NetFlow, I'll just continue with the default of one NIC. For storage, we're going to need to allocate at least 32 gigs of storage, so I'm going to set it to exactly that. So I'm going to just finish up this virtual machine creation, and then we'll edit the settings after I'm done with that. In the settings, I'm going to mount the ISO image, and then I'll power up this virtual machine so we can walk through the installation of the appliance. If you've ever installed Ubuntu, this should be fairly familiar to you. It's just a slightly modified installation of Ubuntu. First, we'll pick our language for the underlying Linux OS, which is English. Next, we'll select Install Observable Network Appliance. The reason it's called Observable is because StealthWatch Cloud used to be a separate company named Observable Networks. The whole idea around Observable Networks was to alert you only on observables that you care about. It was acquired by Cisco a couple years ago, but you'll still see the term Observable, often used in the StealthWatch Cloud console. After selecting to install, we'll be kicked into the standard Ubuntu installation. Once again, I'm going to choose English. And for my country, I'll choose United States. I'm not going to let it auto-detect my keyboard layout, and instead I'm just going to choose English US manually. We'll give it a few seconds for the installation to load various components and detect the hardware. I'm going to just have my sensor use DHCP. Next, the installation will have us create a local user account for this appliance. So I'm going to go ahead and make one up for myself. Then I'll type in a password for this local account. We won't really need to use this account often unless we're trying to troubleshoot something at the console level for the appliance. After we deploy it though, we should be good barring some unforeseen issue. It's going to take a couple minutes to set up my clock and detect the time zone. It should detect my time zone as being Pacific Standard Time in Los Angeles, so I'll choose yes as soon as that pops up. 
For partitioning the disk, I'm going to choose Guided, Use Entire Disk, and then I'll write Changes to Disk. So it should take a couple minutes to install, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here. Ubuntu is going to want to be able to download any software packages. If we're behind a proxy, this is where we would enter the proxy information. Since I'm not behind a proxy in my lab, I'm going to leave it blank and choose Continue. For this option, we're going to choose Install Security Updates Automatically. And of course, I'm going to install the bootloader to the master boot record. So it's going to take about a minute while it finishes the installation, and then my virtual machine will reboot into the new operating system. Once the reboot is completed, I'm going to log in with my local username and password that I set up during installation. Once I logged in, I'm going to issue the curl https slash slash sensor dot ext dot observable dot com command and see what public IP address the sensor is coming from. So from the output, I'm going to write down this IP address and then swing over to my StealthWatch cloud console. Scrolling down on the dashboard, I'm going to enter the public IP address I saw from the output of the curl command and click Add IP Address. After adding that IP address, it still takes a couple of minutes for the sensor to initially register in the dashboard. Usually after a minute or two, we'll see a green cloud on the top right-hand corner showing that the StealthWatch cloud is receiving data from a sensor or source. So we now see that green cloud. Let's go ahead and click that and choose Sensors. We can now see that the sensors register to the cloud, and according to this, the appliance heartbeat is showing as good, and we're receiving IP fixed data from the sensor. If we want to change or register a new public IP address, we can also do so from here. Going back to the sensor, if I click on the Change Settings button, I can define some settings in the sensor itself. By default, the sensor will monitor all RFC 1918 IP addresses. If you want to add your own public IP space or refine those private IP addresses, you can do so here. In my case, I'm going to just define my lab IP subnets. I can also define which probe types the sensor will accept on, and on which ports. I'm going to keep it at IP fixed data on port 2055 and the source will be a standard source. To keep my deployment organized, I'll relabel this sensor as security demo lab SWC. So let's go to the subnets tab. This is where we can define our subnets and specify how StealthWatch Cloud will monitor that subnet. We can adjust the sensitivity to low, normal, or high. We can also be alerted when new devices are detected on the subnet. I'm going to go ahead and add my lab subnets and just give them labels to keep it organized. It looks like I have my subnets defined along with the sensitivity, and it's the same subnets I defined in my monitor subnets. And with that, that ends our StealthWatch Cloud sensor install. I'm going to give this a couple of days to monitor, and then I'll come back to record a walkthrough.